Welcome to Catholic Light. Join me, Becca Doherty, each week as we shed a little light while keeping the conversation light. Guys, thank you so much for having me over. It's so good to see yeah, you guys. Good to see you too. See Thanks you too. for coming. Yeah, you have such a beautiful home, and uh, I think it's so cool that Declan is with us. Thank you for being with us for our show today. Say uh, thanks for having me. And I don't take naps anymore. Don't take naps anymore? That is a huge revelation for this video. I'm really excited to know that. <laughs> uh, and I just wanted to hear about you guys and your walk with Jesus Christ uh, in the Catholic Church and how he's led you to make podcasts despite being a busy mom and a busy dad and a busy employee. Um, and so I just want to learn more about your journey. So, so who are you and, and how the heck did you start making podcasts? How did you get to that point in your life? Hi, and welcome to Catholic Light. I'm Becca Doherty, and I'm delighted that you've decided to join me on this podcast. So first, I am married to a wonderful man, Dan. Uh, we've been married almost seven years, and we have three small children who are five and a half, four, and almost two. And we recently found out we're expecting baby number four. So it is a full and exciting and joyful and often tiring life, uh, but it's wonderful, such a gift. And I'm super grateful to be a stay-at-home mom with these little cuties. Periodically, they'll ask me where I work because they see family and friends uh, working outside the home. And I'll tell them I work at home uh, for you guys or with you guys. And they'll giggle and say, we're your customers. <laughs> Indeed you are, my little friends. Indeed you are. And in their case, the customer is not always right, but we're working on that. So Dan and I first met in high school. We were on student council together, buddies, not like super close. Uh, we graduated, go our separate ways. And um, over the course of the 14 years between graduating and then re-meeting, we were both coming in late to mass one day at St. Andrews. And we were like, hey, we saw each other in the parking lot. Um, hey, oh my gosh, we haven't seen each other in so many years. How? Okay, we'll catch up after mass. Um, and I joked that all throughout Mass, I kept apologizing to Jesus, saying, you know, sorry, I just, I, I kept thinking about Dan. I was like, wow, Dan Doherty aged Dan well. Dan really did that. Yeah, <laughs> he did. Um, so after Mass, we caught up in the vestibule, and, and uh, as we were chatting in the vestibule, all the ladies from church are walking behind Dan, so I could see them, but Dan couldn't, and they're going, he's cute. We'll pray for you. <laughs> and so we, we call that day Love at Second Sight. In our time apart, I had gone to Franciscan University of Steubenville, which is a very beautiful uh, Catholic university in Ohio that has a very, very devout faith life among many of the students. Um, so after being raised in a Catholic home, that really um, built on and deepened my faith. And Dan had a, a journey of his own. So Dan, at church that day, were you just like, I guess I better be Catholic so, I'll, I'll just, so I can date this girl or what was going on there? Very similar to that. Uh, it was after I came back to my faith and my father was in the hospital for knee surgery and my mom said, uh, Dan, you should uh, come to mass with me. We'll pray for your father. And uh, I, think, I think Becca Pine might be there. And I'm like, mom, I'm going for Jesus, not Becca. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah going for both. But um, we've told that story so many times and it seems like uh, I had my version, she had her version. So it kind of molded into one beautiful story. And the only thing I had to add was afterwards, it was when her parents, Gina and Barry, had a Catholic bookstore down the road. And uh, I didn't know how to, to, I guess, hit on her and, and <laughs> try to pursue Becca. So I kind of just went to the store and perused the aisles for probably about 45 minutes. And uh, one of our parishioners, uh, his daughter was working there at the time. And I was just kind of talking to her about apologetics and my faith journey. And I know she was just like, why, why is this guy here? Is he trying to talk to me? When in reality, I was just waiting for and hoping that, that Becca would show up there. So uh, luckily she reached out to me afterwards.
We see this in our daily lives when something good happens. We excitedly share it. I'm engaged. We bought a new house. I got a new job. We're expecting. Uh, my husband Dan and I joke that we're pregnant for about two minutes and then we start telling people. A lot of people will wait till 10 weeks or towards the end of the first trimester to, to share the news. We, we, we see that second line on the pregnancy test and we're immediately telling family and friends. So when we tell people and people say, oh, that's great, you know, what do you do? And we say like nine months from now, they're like, oh, so you're like freshly pregnant. Okay, congratulations. So we, we see this in our own lives that when, when good things happen to us, we very naturally go outside of ourselves and share that goodness. We share that good news. We don't keep it to ourselves. That's because it's characteristic of the good to be diffusive, to go out of itself, to share itself. So while God had no need of anyone or anything, at a certain moment, he decides to share all of that goodness and love and dynamism and richness and beauty with us. He creates us, the world, the angels, all of creation, not because he needed someone to worship him or pray to him or obey his commandments, or because he wanted to kick back and look at the Grand Canyon or the Amalfi Coast or the Amazon and pat himself on the back and say like, dang, I'm good. No, he has no, no need of any of this. Um, but because he is good, God is goodness itself, he goes out of himself and shares that goodness with all of us and all of creation. Do you think that Jesus Christ led you to each other, or did you have a sense of that early on, or um, like what drew you to Becca, and yeah, what drew you to Becca? Her faith, um, it's as simple as that. Uh, when I came back to the Catholic Church, uh, some people talk about soulmates and such like that, and we kind of think of each other as side mates, or you know, Adam and Eve, you know, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and I, I truly believe that, and I'm sorry if you don't believe this, I know she, we're on the same page, that um, God has a plan for all of us. So he knew that we were going to come together, but uh, there's a lot of other types of plans that happen along the way. And so when you have your faith, you, you both have that goal to get to heaven, to, to grow in your Catholic faith. And uh, we just knew that that was attractive to one another. And so, hey, would you like to be my partner in this thing called life. So mm -hmm. I think that's the way it, it worked for me. How about you, Becca? What drew you to Dan? So, um, so there was like a, so he has such a wonderful, just kind, outgoing personality. And um, because we had known each other since high school and our dads have been in the same men's group since I think about 2005, um, you know, I would see, so Dan lived in Texas for a while. I would see his parents at church and um, our siblings knew each other. So there was like um, this happy familiarity with the Doherty family. And so when I saw him, it was like a sense of, um, yeah, just warmth and friendliness and familiarity. And then when he started quoting the saints and talking about, you know, authors like C.S. Lewis and G.K. Chesterton, I am just a Catholic nerd and love reading. And so when he's, he's just dropping these authors' names, <laughs> I was just like, swoon, <laughs> which is nerdy, but um, yeah, our personalities, uh, by the grace of God, um, just click in a good way. And um, Dan, like it sounds, you know, maybe corny to say, but yeah, he challenges me to be a better person and um, our strengths and weaknesses, again, by the grace of God, work well together. So that I think we're a source of comfort to each other, but also challenge each other to be better. Yeah, I think I was a little bit overwhelmed with, um, you know, first dating Becca, then, you know, being introduced to the Pine family where there's nothing I can give. But in reality, there was a lot I could give. And so I, we both have something that we follow, which is the truth, which is Jesus Christ. So as long as we're on that path, if we see someone's veering off at all, you know, it's not it's not relativism. It's it's we're both following that. So I can help Becca. She can help me. So I have a confidence knowing that what I'm teaching is is correct. And so the only thing I had to add was uh, it felt like a little bit of uh, false advertising because uh, when I came back into the faith, 
I would look at snippets of different books. That's kind of my personality. Look at the table of contents. So I knew a lot, a, a little bit about a lot of different authors. So when I had those quotes about G.K. Chesterton, I was like, oh, I really hope she doesn't quiz me on another book of his. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> The Catechism goes on to say, not only is God infinitely perfect and blessed in himself, but in a plan of sheer goodness, freely created man. So first, that word plan implies that this is not haphazard. Again, it was not like God sat back in 1982 and thought, hmm, maybe I'll create a Becca Doherty. No, he had planned my life from all of eternity. God is intentional. He wills for all of eternity, each and every one of our lives and every dimension of creation. It's a plan of sheer goodness. Again, the good shares its goodness with all of us because it's good. And God wants us to experience and enjoy the goodness as well. I uh, taught with this wonderful priest, Father Matt, at one of the high schools in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. And he used to go around uh, asking the high school students, why do you think God created you? And many of these students had been in Catholic education since they were little. And so they knew the theology class definitions and terms. And so they would answer him, well, Father Matt, God created me because he wants me to get to heaven. Or he created me to love and serve others. So they were all good answers, and Father Matt would affirm each of those answers, but then he would press a little further. He would say, okay, but why? Why, why did God make you to get to heaven? Why did God make you to love and serve others? Why did God make you to be the person God created you to be? And as he kind of pressed further and further, he would then answer for the students, God created you because he thought you might like it. How beautiful and simple. God didn't have to create you, but he thought you might enjoy this thing called existence. When we, um, when we were on our honeymoon, there was this one day where we, we went to mass in the morning. We went to a restaurant and um, you know had lunch. We got a bottle of wine. And on the back of the menu, we made goals for our marriage. And at that point, you know, very at the fresh start of our marriage, um, I was a, I had been a teacher for 10 or 11 years at that point. So I was used to lesson plans, goals, how do we get to those goals? So, you know, we had everything from, we honeymooned in Rome, so everything from learn Italian to, you know, pray daily as a couple and then as a family. And um, over time, so we've been married almost seven years, over time, I've learned personally, like, okay, it's not about like ticking the boxes, but figuring out what are the most important things. And I think at this point in our marriage, and I don't know if this is marriage, what will be most important forever, but we try to do monthly dates and then pray daily as a couple and a family. And it's like, if we're doing those things, we're talking to each other, we're praying together, and then, you know, I trust that God will work through that to either achieve those goals or, you know, figure out new goals he has for us and work on that together. The Latin word beatus or beatitude refers to happiness. So we are made as human beings to enjoy happiness. God creates us so that we, like him, may be happy. Every decision we make is aimed towards this end, this goal, this point of being human, to be happy. We do things we enjoy because we think they will make us happy. So we work hard to make money to buy useful and enjoyable things. We get married and raise a family because we see the joy it has brought to others. Even the bad decisions we make, so for example, lying, doing drugs, cheating on an exam, we make them because we think they will eventually lead to happiness. So in creating us, God gives us uh, not only things like the Ten Commandments, the Beatitudes, the Seven Sacraments, prayer, scripture, tradition. He imprints on each and every one of our hearts the natural law, a guidance for how to use our humanity properly so that we achieve the goal or end of our humanity, which is happiness. So that even if we have never encountered Christianity, we didn't grow up in the Catholic Church, when we go to do something, like I mentioned before, cheat on an exam, do drugs, lie to a friend, something inside of us says, mm, that's not right. Mm, I wasn't made to do this. Mm, I don't know that this will lead to the goal, the end of happiness. Because it points to the fact that your life 
and my life and each of our lives are part of a plan of sheer goodness. And we have the opportunity to share in God's own beatitude, his blessedness, his happiness, starting now and lasting, well, forever. So so we got married in 2015 and we had our daughter Sophia in 2016. So I finished, I was teaching, continued teaching while I was pregnant and then um, had Sophia at the end of the school year and then resigned my position to be home full time with the kids. So we have three children, we're expecting our fourth, um, and it's very busy and exciting and, you know, there's lots of things going on, lots of needs. So over the years, people have asked, like, oh, don't you miss teaching? And I think because I'm so in the thick of of parenting, um, over the years, I haven't thought about it too much, but I think I said this to you, um, over the last year, as I would, and we have also taught as a couple at RCIA or I'd give the occasional talk at parishes. I was reminded, oh my gosh, I love I love teaching our Catholic faith. Like I just get like I feel like I'm on fire when I teach it. I just enjoy it so much. Um, that I started thinking about like, ooh, how could I teach while being I would still like to be home full time with the kids. And um, it really started with a number of family and friends um, went through Father Mike Schmitz's uh, Bible and where they, you know, started January or wherever, picked up at some point in the year and read through the Bible cover to cover, listening to his podcast. And so when I heard that and just saw how many people benefited from that, I've always loved the Catechism of the Catholic Church. I use that a lot in teaching. Um, I thought, ooh, maybe there's an audience for that. That's something where, you know, I could teach from home, um, but it would bless people who, I, I think especially if people as they're commuting to work, Um, I say on the podcast, chopping a salad, folding laundry, where they want to do, you know, they want to grow in their faith, come to know Jesus more and learn more about the Catholic faith, but don't necessarily find it hard to sit down and crack open the catechism or read a book about the Catholic faith. And um, so it really just like, just like stuck in my heart. And um, as I would think of different reasons why I shouldn't do it or couldn't do it, it just, um, that that call, I think, remained there, and I was so excited about it. You know, I knew, okay, this is going to be hard to fit it in around um, making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and <laughs> putting kids down for naps. Um, but if this is truly of God, we'll figure it out. And um, so far, it's been it's been great. God makes us in our humanity with a goal, an end, happiness, and if used properly, if we follow the manuals, we are more likely to achieve that. Again, not just in the next life, but in this life as well. So try to set aside thoughts of Zeus and the other Greek gods warring on the top of Mount Olympus for your attention and affection, and picture the God of creation making you out of pure goodness, creating you as a pure gift with no strings attached. He created you because he thought you might like it. Many picture God to be like the Wizard of Oz, this mysterious being behind the curtain, pulling levers and moving parts as ominous fog emerges and a loud voice booms out serious things. But God does not have to, just like he didn't have to create us, God does not have to reveal himself to us or show himself to us, but he does. Why? Because he loves us and he wants us to be in relationship with him. Why? Because that will make us happy and that is great news. One of my personal struggles is with perfectionism and because there's just so many things going on and I don't have the time to do it perfectly, um, I'm learning from that and hopefully it will bless the audience that like, okay, we can do great things. It's not going to be perfect. And I think you've said this too, like you just do what you can. A year from now, it might be more perfect, but let's just do what we can right now. Actually, speaking of G.K. Chesterton and perfectionism, so G.K. Chesterton, who was a British author at the turn of the 20th century, he said, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. <laughs> so just g- give what you got and God, if it's of God, he'll bless it and get it to where it needs to go. Yeah, when I came, I left the Catholic Church for probably 10 to 15 years. And what brought me back was uh, a lot of literature that my mom would send me. Exactly. Yeah, year yeah. after year, just apologetics, Catholic answers and different apolog- apologist type of books. And yeah, I, I would go, when I was in college, we would have 
late night discussions in the fraternity house about religion and politics. And that was just kind of something I enjoyed doing with people. But I also found when I stopped playing sports, I was still competitive. So I, I wanted not only to win, I wanted to be right, you know, uh, but I wanted to know the truth. So a lot of the types of faiths I was uh, exploring at the time, it just seemed very nebulous and not, uh, it, it was based on more feeling than, than fact. And so I cracked open those books and I just went, went to reading and uh, after chapter after chapter, I would just say, you know, I, I actually believe that, that makes sense. And then when I got to the end of all these books, I was just like, why did I ever leave the Catholic Church? So, before I met Becca, I thought I was going to be uh, an apologist. I thought I might be a priest. I didn't know where I was going to go. I just knew I was going to spread the gospel to everybody, uh, not by force, but, but with joy and, and with facts. And it wasn't until I got together with Becca, we got married, that she brought something up to me and she said, you know, maybe just being a good husband, being a good dad, that could be your vocation and you could bring others to Jesus that way. And I thought, well, yeah, but I still wanted to do this. And so I had to pull back because the better dad, the better husband I wanted to be, the less I had time for that. But uh, it, it's worked out really well. So I joined a men's group. I, I'm strong in my faith. So the more I retreat uh, in personal prayer and, and researching on my own, I don't have to go out and bombard people with the gospel, with apologetics. Uh, it could just be a better way for me to be a dad and a husband, and hopefully that's reflective to, to others in, in the joy in my face and my conversations with others. So some of us might picture this powerful white bearded man on top of a mountain telling us to obey his 10 commandments or else he'll send down a lightning bolt. Uh, some of us might picture a serious accountant type, okay, keeping a steady record of our rights and wrongs, and then periodically tallying up the two sides only to look sternly at us over his glasses and calculator. Okay, but for just now, let's say this. The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, have always been in a perfect relationship of love. So for all of eternity, the Father has been pouring out his love on the Son. For all of eternity, the Son has been receiving that love and giving it back to the Father. That love is so rich, so dynamic, so beautiful, so real that we call it by another name, the Holy Spirit. This is big stuff, so we'll revisit it in later episodes. But for now, know this. For all of eternity, so no beginning, no end, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have been in a beautiful exchange of giving and receiving love. So again, God could have remained perfectly content within himself and never created anyone or anything, and he would have been just fine. Okay, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit giving and receiving love for all of eternity. He could have gone on for all of eternity, uh, enjoying his own blessedness. Instead, he shares himself and his capacity for life and love so that we too can share in it, with him and with others. Well, it has been such a joy to hang out with you. Uh, it was so exciting to hear him tell me that he doesn't nap anymore, <laughs> and yet here he is. And yet, I, and I also think it's such a great witness that you are comfortable uh, talking about your relationship with God as a husband and a wife, uh, with your child at your side, because I think that really is what we're supposed to do as Catholics. We're supposed to live our Catholic Christian faith in the midst of life. Um, we're not supposed to be of the world, but we are supposed to be in it. Yeah. And uh, you two are definitely in it, <laughs> while certainly trying to not be of it. And, and uh, I just thank you guys for your time. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, you guys Dan. God are bless the you. Very God Thanks. bless you. God Thanks, bless guys.
And that's so funny that Declan started with, I don't take naps anymore. <laughs> 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 That's great. I love it. I love it.